Hey folks, and welcome back to Glenn and Adrian's Rock Talk. That's Adrian. And that's Glenn. Today we're going back to Pink Floyd's Pulse Tour, and we're going to take a look at Run Like Hell. Now, those of you that had the wall know that Run Like Hell was towards the very end of the record, when things were just about to climax, we were just going into the trial, I believe. It's a big, pivotal moment. It also makes for a great energetic moment at the end of most of the Floyd shows in that, that second half of their career you know, after the wall, uh, without Roger. I thought it would be worth taking a look. Also, it was requested by a few people. So, Adrian, uh, are you familiar with the song, first of all? Yes. It's actually one of my first favorite Floyd songs. Uh, oh. when, you know, when I, when I first got the wall back in, I guess it was 81 or something like that, when I got that album. And Great, okay. It's one of the songs that was most played on that album. Mm, yeah, I know in general you... You were mentioning back then, you really weren't that into the wall as an album. And, uh, yeah, I liked some of the songs. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. They, it's good as an album. It's a little, uh, a little different from what I first envisioned it to be back when I got the record. But yeah, you know, very young <laughs> and everything. <laughs> I bet a lot of people can say that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, well, they just put out, you know, Dark Side and Wish You Were Here and then that Animals record and, you know, okay, but now here we are and, oh, wow, what's this? <laughs> oh, there's a plane coming at me. Oh, what's yeah, the, save yeah. the baby, you know, <laughs> all this stuff happening. Yeah, it was a very theatrical thing, but that is one of the top moments on the album for me as well. Uh, it's another one that David Gilmore had a hand in writing. And so in continuing our look at Pulse, this is actually only the second one. Uh, we're hoping maybe to go back for a third, but we'll, we'll go ahead and take a look at this. Can I assume you haven't seen this, Adrian? I haven't seen any video of this song, no. Okay, good, good. All right, well, why don't we take a look? They're making us wait. Yeah, there's some extra going on here. Thank you. 
Thank you very much indeed. Good night. Guy Pratt on bass guitars. I was wondering who was playing bass because he had a he had a, a great voice for this song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love how he he kind of channeled the Roger vibe or the, yeah. you know, <laughs> I guess the Pink vibe. Um, yeah. yeah, and you know what? What I was kind of interested in seeing there was that he's got a four string bass that he's playing that on. He's got a drop D tuning because it, it's down to the D. Oh yeah. yeah. But normally, yeah, normally when you get down to those notes, you, you'll see the bass player will have at least five strings, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but not not Guy. <laughs> it's great. I mean, I'm actually a big believer in four-string basses, even if you drop tune them once in a while. Yeah, I, I used to have one of my basses drop tune to C sharp instead of E. Oh, right. Black Sabbath stuff. I was big into Sabbath stuff, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Well, great. So what did you think of that uh, that performance? Oh, it's awesome. And uh, I, I was kind of wondering what year that video came out too, or that the oh. whole Pulse tour came out because I, I just noticed the explosions and everything. And oh yeah, this must have happened before that thing in Rhode Island, that station nightclub oh, yeah. fire. So it's probably an indoor venue. So yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, the station fire, February twenty two thousand three. Uh, anyway, we don't need to get off in that but you're right uh, i remember a lot more pyrotechnic displays in the 80s and the 90s i mean mm -hmm. seeing acdc in some of the venues they fired off cannons you know for for those about to rock uh floyd was at the top of their game at that point i love the light displays which i mean by this time they're automated yeah Just, that was that was pretty cool how would you like to have a job as somebody that was doing the lighting on a show like this just being allowed to design what they're going to do mm. i think that might be kind of fun Oh, yeah. It's nice to see what that looked like. It's very, very cool. Very similar, I think, to what I remember for uh, Momentary Lapse. They were, they were similar tours. Pulse was a little bit more flashy because it was seven years later, you know, so there were advances in the technology. Uh, momentary Lapse was from the late 80s, wasn't it? 88 or 87, something? 87, 88. Yep. Saw them in, I think it was first 87 and then 88 because they came back around in the mm -hmm. same tour. Well, I'm glad I'm glad we took a look at that. Folks, if you'd like us to look at something else, that's fine. I, I should let you know it's looking like Sorrow is basically a no-go. It gets blocked in most places. Uh, Shine On, I think, is going to be the same thing. I looked into that. Mm. Um, but we might just look at Echoes. We'll see about that from later from Dansk. All right. So with that, we'll catch you on the next video, folks. Um, uh, if you enjoyed this one, please give it a like. And if you enjoy our presentation, please subscribe. All right. Thanks for being here, and we'll catch you on the next one. All right. Take care. See you all later.